<laughs> Hello. It's okay. At this age, they barely even look like hyenas at all. Oopsie. Come on, Mum, move up. Thirsty. And breakfast. <laughs> look at that. That's just a bird, little one. It's just a bird fluttering. It's okay. This is my favorite age to watch them at, when they're still mastering that coordination level. <laughs> they're attempting to surmount the mountain that is Mom's shoulder blade. Oh, never mind, I'll settle for chewing on her ear instead. Now, Blue Butterfrog. I haven't said anything about their names, so don't worry, you didn't miss anything. It's because we haven't named them yet. Um, we found ourselves at a little bit of a crossroads here. Oh, bye-bye. Come on, bring your sibling up. The reason I say that is because up until recently we'd sort of been, over the last year or so, we'd been nicknaming the hyena cubs after the month that, the, that they were born in. We've encountered a hassle here, which is one that we was relatively predictable due to the passage, natural passage of time. But that is, we've now come full circle. Um, we have a hyena cub that is now almost a hyena adult, sub-adult, called June. So we can't call these cubs June 1 and 2. So we'll have to start coming up with a slightly better solution. The reason we've named our hyenas, apart from the fact that we become as attached to them as we do to the leopards and the lions, is because otherwise it becomes completely impossible for us to actually keep track of their their dynamics and their movements. Imagine if I was telling you that this was number 13, I don't know, number 12, and her two cubs, number 13 and number 14, and then they were interrupted by number 8, and number 8 is higher ranking, whatever number system we would give to them. It's next to impossible. It's much easier to remember names than it is to remember numbers.